In this short video, we're going to go over how to memorize the structures and sizes of different nitrogenous bases. And let's go ahead and jump right in with our first mnemonic, which is pure as gold. The pure here stands for purines. And what is a purine? Well, a purine is referring to a two ring structure. And the as and the gold are referring to which of our nitrogenous bases are purines. So here, we're going to be thinking about the capitals in all of this. So the as is for adenine or the A, and then the G here in gold is for guanine. Let's go ahead and look at this mnemonic in a little bit more depth and see how we can memorize the structures within the purines. When I think of gold, I think of gold rings and I think of getting married. Typically, two people are getting married, so there'll be two rings. So we can remember that our purines have two rings because that's what you would need for people to get married. Well, that's great. But now that we see that we have two ring structures, both our guanine and our adenine, how can we decide between the two? Well, if you notice here, I wrote adenine as ad ends. And this is really important because if we look at its structure, it has nothing but nitrogens in addition to its carbons. This is going to be different than guanine. This is different than guanine or other molecules because they have a carbonyl. So if you see only ends in the structure of a purine, you know it's adenine. And then by process of elimination, if you see a carbonyl, it has to be guanine. Since there's only two, we don't need a specific mnemonic for guanine. Just remember that it's going to be the one with the carbonyl or it's not anything but ends. Now that we've tackled our purines, let's go ahead and look at our pyrimidines. We can remember our pyrimidines by using the mnemonic cut the pi. The pi here is referring to the pyrimidines, and the cut is going to tell us which of our nitrogenous bases are pyrimidines. So we have cytosine, uracil, and thymine. Now that we understand which three are pyrimidines, let's see how we can begin to memorize the structures of these and what to look for in each. Let's get started with cytosine. So cytosine has one O in the name, and that's how I like to think about the structure here. So these are all pyrimidines, one ring, but cytosine is the only one that has one O. This is different than both uracil and thymine, which is going to have two carbonyl groups attached. So if you only see one O, remember that that's the one O in cytosine. Now, what about the difference between thymine and uracil? Well, outside of this little methyl group that's hanging off the side of thymine, they are identical. And we can remember that thymine refers to methyl in the name. If we think about how methyl is actually spelled, it has that thigh in it. And so that's where this thigh prefix is coming from. And that refers to the fact that it has this methyl group or this carbon chain hanging off. Now, what about uracil? Well, I like to think of uracil and I like to think about the U in uracil. If we draw a shape between the O's like this here, it's sort of U-shaped. And so this helps me remember that this must be uracil. This is how you can distinguish between the pyrimidines. Make sure that you're focusing on just those features. You don't need to be able to draw all of these different nitrogen spaces. You really need to be able to recognize them because they're going to give you the structures in answer choices. Now that we've seen our mnemonics for keeping the structures of our nucleotides straight, let's go ahead and look at how we can apply this on a question. So this question asks, in glycolysis, glucose is trapped inside cells by hexokinase catalyzed phosphorylation. Which of the following nitrogen bases is attached to the molecule that provides the phosphate for this reaction? We need to know a little bit about metabolism here and specifically what hexokinase does. So hexokinase is going to take a glucose molecule and it's going to phosphorylate it into G6P. During this process, it's going to utilize an ATP molecule and convert it into ADP. So here we can see that we're looking for ATP, or the nitrogenous base in this is adenine. So that means that we need to go ahead and look at these different structures here and see if we can think about adenine, or if we remember a little monic for it, it's ad ends. Before we look for just the ad ends component, let's go ahead and begin to think about the distinction between purines and pyrimidine. So purines are pure as gold, that's adenine and guanine. And since we're thinking about purines, that's going to be our two rings because those are our gold rings. Well, if that's the case, then we're looking for a structure that has two rings since our purines are adenine and guanine. Therefore, we can get rid of this structure here since it only has one ring as well as this one. Now we can go ahead and use that information about ed ends and we'll start on this left-hand structure and see if it has ends or carbonyls or anything else that would disqualify it. Here we can see that it has a carbonyl and because it possesses this carbonyl, it can't be adenine. So we can get rid of that answer choice as well. That leaves us with one of the answer choices, this one here, and that is the structure of adenine. Now, this is really helpful because we can then just go ahead and look and see that, in fact, it has nothing but nitrogens throughout the entire molecule. Therefore, we can be sure that this is the right answer, not just by process of elimination, but also using the mnemonic for the adenine molecule as well. 
Now that we've seen how to keep the structure straight, let's go ahead and think about size and who's going to be the heaviest of all of these. If we think about our mnemonics, we have pure is gold and cut the pie. Well, gold is heavy, so that's going to tell us something about who will be heavy. And cut the pie, well, we cut something. And our pyramidines, therefore, must be cut or smaller. Therefore, our heaviest has to be one of the pyramids. And specifically, the way that I want you to think about this is that gold is heavy. And gold, or the G in guanine, is going to be connected. So between both guanine and amine, guanine will be the heaviest. Let's go ahead and look at the other four and decide from there who's going to be the heaviest and who will be the lightest and everything in between. Now that we've decided that guanine is the heaviest, let's go ahead and think about the rest of our nitrogenous bases and how we can begin to rank them. So we'll use our pure as gold mnemonic again, and we've already decided that guanine is the heaviest, but since adenine is also in here and it's appearing and those are going to be the heaviest too, then that means that adenine must be the second heaviest. Now let's go ahead and jump over to our pyrimidines and think about how to decide sizes over here. Again, not with calculations or trying to actually figure out the exact molecular masses, but thinking about this kind of intuitively. So as we begin to look at a lot of these molecules, they have some slight differences between one another. Let's go ahead and explore those right now. So on cytosine here, we can see that it only has one carbonyl and instead has a nitrogen. And remember, that's our site O scene. And this O right here is for one oxygen or one O. And that's different than both thymine and uracil because they have two carbonyls. Now, why does this matter? Well, oxygen is heavier than nitrogen. And if this is the case, since cytosine has one less oxygen than the others, then we know that cytosine has to be the lightest of all of them. So we can go ahead and give this the ranking of fifth or the fifth heaviest, since it's going to be the lightest. Now we have to decide between both thymine and uracil. And in this case here, we want to think about the big difference between these two. Now, remember, they have the exact same structure, except thymine has an additional methyl group. That's what this thy in it stands for. That's for the methyl now, if that's the case, then this is actually really helpful because if that's the only difference, thymine has to be heavier. It has to be heavier because it has an additional carbon. Therefore, this has to be the heaviest of all the pyrimidines, or it'll be the third heaviest, and uracil will be the fourth heaviest. So here we can see we didn't brute force the memorization here, but use the structures in addition to what we know about them to keep these straight. Let's go ahead and look how we actually apply this information in a specific question. In this question, we're asked, gel electrophoresis was used to determine the identity of four samples, pure uracil, pure thymine, pure adenine, pure guanine. Which of the following lanes corresponds to the sample containing pure thymine? We know we're asked about a size question here because gel electrophoresis is going to separate things on the basis of size. Big things will end up near the top of the gel, while smaller things will end up near the bottom. If we're able to go ahead and figure out the order or the relative sizes of the nitrogenous bases that have been listed, then we should be able to label these accordingly. To begin, let's think about our purines. Remember, they are pure as gold, and gold is heavy. Since gold is heavy, we know that the two heaviest nitrogenous bases will be adenine and guanine. Guanine here is for gold, so guanine will be the heaviest. If that's the case, then the one that's closest to the top on the gel that's shown will be guanine, or lane one. Following that is going to be adenine. And now that we've decided where our guanine or where our guanine and our adenine or our purines are going to fall, let's go ahead and look at our pyrimidines now too. So for our pyrimidines, we have both uracil and thymine being listed. And we want to think about the difference between these two and see if we can determine the size and how they're going to relate to one another. Now, remember, uracil and thymine have the exact same structure, except thymine has that additional methyl group. Since it has an additional methyl group, that's going to make it a little bit heavier, which means that thymine has to be heavier than uracil, making that lane three. And then finally, lane four will be uracil. This pretty much gives us our correct answer here. Since we've labeled thymine as lane three, it's sort of that third heaviest out of the ones that have been listed. The correct answer here has to be C or lane three. Here you can see how we're using our mnemonics and we're using the understanding of the structure without having to know everything about each nitrogenous base, nor needing to brute force the memorization to get through a question like this. If you found this video helpful, make sure to like and subscribe and share this video with anybody else who might be taking the MCAT.